support for our local community. From a small dent to major collision repair, Hamilton Paint and Body is here for you. Owners Brett and Kim Guin would like to say thank you for your business. Hello everybody, I'd like to welcome you to Brittany's Flowers and Gifts. Uh, we appreciate all the business. We'd like to encourage you to come by and get a fresh bouquet or uh, a gift. And we, once again, we thank you for all your business here at Brittany's Flores, 921-0774. Northwest Alabama heating and cooling, blowing away our competition. Hello, I'm Richard Kitchens, owner of Sports Gallery here on the Court Square in Hamilton. I'd like to thank all of our customers and uh, thank you for watching the Hamilton City Council meeting. Hi, my name is Randy Whitehead, President and CEO of People's Trust Bank. I invite you to view the live streaming of Hamilton City Council meetings every first and third Monday at 6 o'clock p.m. Hi, I'm Dr. Wayne Cobb, Jr. here at Hamilton Vision and Eye Care, and this is Dr. Grant Fowler. And uh, we've been in business here in Hamilton since 1995, and it's been a while. So uh, but we appreciate uh, everyone that's come to see us. And uh, if you have any eye care needs, please feel free to give us a call. Thank you. Plan your perfect stay at the Holiday Inn in Guin off of I-22. Enjoy our amazing on-site restaurant and bar with a lunch buffet every Sunday. Relax with a quick getaway with your family and make a splash in our outdoor pool. Book your next event with us. Call us at 205-468-4625. Uh, I'm Rick Chambliss with Marion County Funeral Home and Spry Memorial Chapel in Russellville, Alabama. This is Glenda Cochran, our manager out here. And we just wanted to advise the public of where we're standing, where we were 15 years ago, and where we are now. When we purchased this funeral home, we were doing two and three funerals a year. Now we're doing 80 funerals a year. And we are so excited about the accomplishments that we've made. One of the things that we continually get into is families coming out here and talking about pre-needs and saying, well, we have done something at another funeral home and, or we've done this and it wasn't like you're doing here. Under the laws of Alabama that was passed in 2002, a funeral establishment has to be certified with the state and carry a certificate of authority before they can even talk to anyone about a pre-need. Even monies that are spent on a pre-need cannot come to the funeral home. They have to be into an insurance policy or they have to go into a trust fund which is governed by the state. One of the things we'd like to ask people to do if there is a question about your pre-need existence with another funeral home, regardless of where it might be, bring it out here to us at no charge, no obligation to you whatsoever. We want to make sure that your family is covered in the very best possible way they can and do it in a legal manner so that your money, when the time comes, is guaranteed to be there. Glenda does an excellent job in consulting with the families and if I need to be here, we will. Also, the same scenario in Russell, Alabama, the Spry Memorial Chapel. But we are pleased to serve the public and we plan on serving for years to come. Since 1987, Smith Furniture has been in business to serve the community with high quality furniture at the best price. Some of our name brands are Home Stretch, Ashley, Lazy Boy, Catnapper, Lane, Bar Bassett, GE, Frigidaire, Whirlpool, and Maytag. We offer finance in 12 months, same as cash. So stop by Fulton, Mississippi and see Jim, Shannon, and Joe at Smith's Furniture or call us at 662-862-7412. The six o'clock hour has arrived and we're a little late for this meeting. It's supposed to be last night but we had a Labor Day holiday and the city hall closed down yesterday. And so we're here on Tuesday night, the 6th, to have this uh, 
council meeting. I appreciate everyone that's come this way to be a part. And uh, we uh, want to make a couple of comments before we get into the meeting tonight. Uh, uh, for the citizens out there that may uh, be uh, thinking about fall, uh, Buddy Hatcher Fall Fest is coming up late October, so be putting that on your calendar. We want to be sure and uh, promote it and also attend it because there's going to be new events, more events this year than before, and it's going to be hopefully bigger and better than ever before. The Chamber is doing a lot of hard work in preparation, and I think it's going to be very good. On a sad note to, tonight, we want to remember two of our own that have served our community so well. Businessman and former mayor Ray Harper uh, passed away recently and uh, uh, we grieve with his family tonight along with James Dodd who was our KFC man for so many years. Both these men had roots in other counties. They grew up Ray in Walker County and James in Winston County but I assure you no two men were more of Hamilton than these two men and we're certainly going to miss them and our hearts go out tonight to their families. Some of you men might want to make a comment about this. If you, if you do, feel free to do so. Both men did so much for our community and, you know, from, you know, the different things they were involved in throughout the community and uh, just like you said, our, our prayers and thoughts are with, with both those families. Is, I really miss him. It's um, especially um, James Dodd. Um, he's one of the first people I remember as a kid um, being involved in his, was it the JC or CJ's um, and uh, in the Kiwanis. And they always did the uh, Christmas baskets. Mm -hmm. The Kiwanis had that up, and I took that over after he decided to get out. But um, and Ray um, as well. He was. Good mayor and, and um, well liked. Both been missed. Any comments? Both, both represented Hamilton very well, especially not being from here, like you said. So I appreciate both of them. Me and Ray was good friends, and uh, James always a big supporter of the schools, and they recognized him at the uh, ball game the other night. And I thought that was a good, good thing for his family because he was a he was an Aggie, went to a lot of weddings all over, home that way. So for him and Bill Nyland, and Bill Nyland was another player that uh, was a big sport. We've lost several uh, men that represented Hamilton very well in the last few years. You know. They were two of them as well as um, Mr. Nyland. Uh, before we move on <coughs> to our uh, agenda, we will we'll pause just for a moment and have a invocation and our pledge that we always do and then we'll move right into our meeting. So we'll stand together at this time. Our Father in heaven, we come to you, Lord, tonight just thanking you that we have been given another day of life and that we can enjoy the beauty of this day. Father, we thank you for the fall and how it uh, always tends to uh, move us to a new season. Lord, we've had a hot summer and we're going to be thankful for those cool evenings that we can enjoy and go out and support our uh, favorite teams and uh, be a part of, uh, of the pleasures of the world. We never want to lose sight of you, Lord, and what you mean to us and to our community. And we, so we that thank you, Lord, that you'll be in the meeting tonight and you'll help us to conduct it in a way that will be pleasing in your sight. Be with our uh, local and uh, national leaders, our state leaders, Lord, that they may make good decisions for our nation and our state. Help us, Lord, as we try to move forward and, and remain united uh, in the front. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, ladies. 
Our first item on the agenda tonight would be a recommendation to approve the minutes of the August 15th uh, City Council meeting. We have a motion and second. I'll make that motion. Scott Tyra made the motion. We'll need a second. May have made the second. All those in favor of approving our minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Item two is a recommendation to approve the accounts payable bills for August 2022. And uh, those bills are the ones that are currently due. So we'd need a motion and a second to pay our bills. I'll make a motion. Scott Robertson made the uh, motion, we need a second. I'll second. Uh, second. All those in favor of paying our August bills? Mayor, I'll, I'll abstain on mine. Thank you. We understand. Uh, appreciate that. Thank you for the work you do for us, though. I appreciate it. Item three is the announcement of hiring uh, two of our uh, volunteer firemen to become firefighter trainees for the Hamilton Fire Department, we'd like to announce tonight that Spencer A.G. and Skylar Willingham will be the two uh, candidates for those jobs, and they'll both be going to the academy. Is that correct, Chief? That's correct. At the okay. same time? Yes, sir. And when is that? The next March. So they yeah. work until next March? Yeah. Then go to school? Yeah. And, and they have passed a portion of their test? They did. Uh, kind of physical agility test that everybody has to pass so they can go to rookie school. They both of them have passed it. And <coughs> one or more of these young men had, a, had asked for a job prior to this. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, both, both of them are active volunteers also. We're, we're going to be proud to have them stepping up from their volunteer roles to full-time firemen as soon as we can get the training done. Uh, Both of these to replace, is that right? That's right. That is, it is to replace. Okay. Ten members, I ask, are uh, volunteers pretty active? We got several. Uh, we've got several on the road. Uh, don't seem to be, we don't seem to be getting as many volunteers as we once did. The ones we got are very active in it. And we had a Structure fire other morning, yesterday morning about 4:30. Had a good turnout, so that was a big help. Yes. We were able to put it out. Yep, got to put it out. The dryer caught on fire. Good. That's that's a good report. We're always glad to extinguish those fires oh, instead yeah. of having to <laughs> stand back and let it burn. Yeah. Know? That's a that's the job we take on. Sometimes it's dangerous around those fires. Recommended pay for uh, Spencer and T uh, Skyler would be equal sixteen twenty two per hour for their positions as firefighter trainees. at the entry level pay for our firemen, and uh, I'd need a motion and a second to pay these young men. I like motion. Ross made the motion. We need a second. Uh, Wade made the second. All of us in favor. Thank you. Item five is um, something we've been working with for a while, and uh, we're going to recommend tonight that we convert to two-week pay period uh, with direct deposit, beginning with the September 17th through September 30th pay period, receiving pay for those two weeks on October 7th. The employees will will be paid by the rent deposit every two weeks then thereafter. Um, we've had, I believe it's five different ways that we paid our employees. When our accountant uh, called the state uh, and told them how we paid, so that, that surely can't be possible that y'all are doing that, but um, we feel like this is the best time, or maybe the only time we'll have to get this converted and get our payroll running smooth is when we give this bonus uh, to our employees that we voted to do out of the COVID uh, recovery. 
uh, we helped them through this two week period and uh, that was the logic and I'm wanting to do it right now. I mean, we've been looking at this, a lot of the companies we've checked with and other cities are doing two week pay periods and it, it, it would fit us very well and, and, it, and it's, it was the right time for us to convert to make it work smoothly for our employees. So I'm recommending that tonight. Any discussion? Uh, yes, Mayor, I've had multiple employees, you know, reach out to me. I just have one question, maybe Angela and Amy can answer it. Is there any way, like, we could maybe give an option on whether or not they could go to direct deposit or stay away, or would that be off the table? That's just a question I couldn't answer. Right. So, I, I mean, I... I mean, we, we just kind of said we were going to do it. Right. It, it, it'd be better if we see all or none. Right. I mean, if we just all went to direct deposit or just gave them a check. Um, I mean, it's just kind of split with, you know, you've got half that, or a lot of them that want it and some that don't, so. That was my only thing. I'm going to make a couple of concerns about a uh, few of the employees are worried that they'll get uh, more taxes out of um, their two-week check versus a single week. I try to put that to rest, but um, it, you, you, you guys have told us that the, that the calculation for how they get cut will end up being the same, and, and they'll get the same net check. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It be, I mean, just be one week. I mean, it's the just add from what one week to the next. It's what they'll be getting. Right. So. Because we would change them on the payroll system from weekly to bi-weekly. Which so it's exactly the same. Right. It'll change the tax tables when you do, when you change that. I understand that. So if you work more overtime one week than the other, basically the check will be the same if it's weekly or bi-weekly. Right, right. No matter yes. how many overtime hours yeah. you get, you won't get cut more. Mm -hmm. so that's been no. some concern. No. Because it, asked me about when we when you change that to the the 80 hours instead of 40 hours, it changes your tax tables. So I went in there and, and figured it to make sure that nobody's was going to be less. And Tim, how's your guys? They're they're all for it. They are. Mm -hmm. Some departments are all kind of for it, and some are kind of all against it. Um, it's just when things have been done a certain way forever and. It's difficult to change, and know it's a transition that we're asking employees to do <coughs> something for the city that we are asking them to do. Instead of just, you know, I feel like we've been very fair to our employees, even doing the COVID check, which was an option that we had, we could do or not do. Normally, we'd have probably done it in December, but trying to do it during this transition, I hope will help. Maybe smooth things over for a week or two anyway. Because you're going to go a little bit without it. If you didn't do the COVID money, we'd some of them be going on a couple of days checks. Is that right? Because mm -hmm. yes, we, well, we're going to have to change the pay period back to Friday. <clears throat> so um, with that one week, you know, they would get the prior weeks, you know, two days and then their $1,000. And normally on the draft. Friday morning it will be there. I'm not sure exactly. After midnight, After Thursday midnight. Yeah. night. Yeah, I know it's always right midnight. It's for, uh, I know. And when you get up Friday morning, I mean, it, it should there. be there. Yeah. Mary, you had any discussions with any of them? I've gone uh, foreman. I've not had anyone who approached me uh, about it. Uh, no department head. I've had one phone call today. Uh, from an employee, and after we talked, he was fine with it. Uh, but um, as far as uh, it working, uh, I've had uh, I've been paid both ways in my work career, and the direct deposit will work. I'm I'm, I'm sure of that, and uh, it's going to make it lots better on our payroll department. 
also having to report the uh, weekly retirement to the state. Angela has to leave her desk every week for a half a day or more to get that into the state, get it up to date and balanced. She'll have to do it every two weeks now. Still got to do the reports, but she's not out of her office for those hours that she's missing now, and I think it'll be better on everybody concerned. And I think it'd work well for the employees if it was penalizing the employees or something. I wouldn't do it. I think it'd be great to have the money in the bank Friday morning, no questions asked. And, and it's not going to hurt them tax wise, so I can't see the negatives in it. I, I was in uh, Southern today working and had to meet with the mayor over there on another job. And, uh, I asked him about his payroll, and there was a direct fire this evening. So, I mean, it is a common thing, and we're really probably behind them, honestly. Yeah. It's sort of obsolete compared to others. <clears throat> and also, when they re when you reach retirement, that's the way it's going to be, too. You know, there's no choice. Yeah. I mean, Charlie from Slam will ask for a check. You won't get one. We did it several years ago. Buccaneer, and there was a lot of folks hesitant about it, but I think it's everybody's got used to it. And some people just don't like change. Yeah. I think you're seeing more businesses doing this now than probably not. You know, and I'd, I'd like to say it's not because. Amy and I don't want to do our job, you know, we want it as easy as possible. It's not that. But when you have five different payrolls, basically, that you're having to do every week, and every time a new person gets a hold of our retirement down there at the state, it blows their mind. And they're calling, y'all can't do that. You know, we've got to restructure it. We've got to, you know, like, well, this is how we do payroll. This, this is how it's been doing. And they just cannot believe it, that that's how we, we send everything in. But yeah, and I think that's some of the things maybe the employees don't understand. It's not something y'all just dreamed of. No, we uh, were asked by a lot of people wanting it. Even new employees come in, do y'all do direct deposit? You know, like younger generation, they that's all they kind of know. Yeah. I mean, they don't, Morgan, when she got paid the first time, didn't know what to do with the check. So, I mean, you know, a lot of people, that's, and we always have to tell them we don't offer direct deposit. So. Well, the bank better off. <laughs> I've had one contact, and it was just, I think, more to do with change. Yeah. That's the only reason I got it. motion on this matter and we'll need a second. I'll second. I'll second. Those in favor of going to a two week pay period with a direct deposit, please raise your hands. Thank you. Item six is a recommendation to increase the annual budget of the Hamilton Chamber of Commerce to 29.9 per year for their continued promotion of various festivals and events held in the city of Hamilton as well as ads, publicity, and Im improvement on the website. <clears throat> Current events promoted by the Chamber are Jerry Brown Arts Festival, National Day of Prayer, Shrimp Ball, Miss Hamilton Pageant, Christmas Parade, Buddy Hatcher River Fall Festival, Hamilton Homeowners Christmas, Easter Egg Hunt, which I think is a new thing they're going to do, Cowboy Day, uh, Glen Air, uh, uh, Air Artist uh, Visitation and uh, Back to School Bash and Dinner on the First. Uh, some of these are new things that they've added in and they're going to need some money to promote these. So they've asked us to increase their budget to twenty nine nine, and uh, they visited with us, gave us their logic of it ask us to put it on the agenda for a vote and uh, so council uh, I'm making this as a recommendation and I'd like to 
us to vote on it tonight and decide whether we can increase the budget. How much motion? At the motion. I'll second. Got a second. Those in favor of supporting our chamber. Thank you very much. I, I think it's a worthy effort. I, I see the chamber at work. They are doing more for us than they've ever done in the past, in my opinion. And I think they're wanting to go further with it and, and, and do new events that help us bring our community together even more. So I'm proud of this council that we supported them with the increase uh, in our budget. And I like the idea of the, I'm excited about the dinner on the first. I think that is a great idea. Yeah. And those money was missing. Anything else to tonight? To I, I'd like to suggest or ask if we can go to executive session just for a little bit before we adjourn. As a new personnel, I don't think it takes just two minutes. But okay. I won't take long. The only thing I got, I just, I'd like to, I'd like to see something be added to the agenda tonight, and that would be for department heads to turn to turn in a report. That could be done by email. Also. But tell us what's going on in their department with these overtime hours, just so that we better understand. I understand there's emergencies. You know, there's nothing we can do about that. But we got to be good stewards of money, and I just like to be able to know what's going on while we're having overtime in these different departments. And I, like I said, I just like it to be like you just turn it into a pay, pay period and. Just to understand what's going on. And I'd like to add that to the agenda tonight. Any discussion or thoughts you want to share with council on that matter? I agree with Scott. Just to send the report to you. Yeah, I agree. You know, if you have 10 hours overtime in the water park, the fire park, just let the mayor know he gave it to us. We had extra hours Sunday at 2 30 in the morning or whatever. Well, it's just not simply like just do an email, man. You got to worry about coming up here and just right. turn it inside something. Like at least email each one of us and uh, just, just so that we do some kind of simple form that might not come up with. You know, I'll help us with that. How do you think it might want to need to come? You think it needs to come to one of y'all and you send it to everybody or do you want it sent direct to the councilman and myself? How do you think that? Well, I think it's. We can. I'll send it off. Yeah. I'll make that motion as constitution. We got a motion. We can we have the agenda about what it's going to be? I'll make a motion to amend the agenda. Okay. We got a motion to make an amendment to our agenda tonight. I'll send it. We got a second. Are those in favor of the amendment to our agenda? Okay. Now let's hear the motion that you're going to put up forward. Yeah, yeah, thanks on the hand. I uh, did talk to uh, Andrea today, uh, the cleaning is done, uh, the, uh, they did a fantastic job inside cleaning up the uh, uh, building, the, this is the uh, Surpro people. She told me she would deliver the final drawings to me before the week's out for your review. And it's been, she said she'd been terribly busy, I apologize for not getting it in, but she made another promise to me today to get the plans in. Uh, I, this is one of the first things we met on this October, November is going to be three years in a row. And I got people asking me every day, what, what are we doing about the handling of the house? And I mean, all I can tell them is we're waiting on the architect. Uh, well, that's kind of where we've been. Uh, you're telling them the truth. So, Andrew thinks we coming to us to give us what the next step is. Let's, let's, let's start getting some work done on it. I mean, it's, it's in bad shape. And it's an eyesore for the yeah. fire sheet. Yeah. Yeah. You're exactly right. We need to go back and on that. It's a Yeah, we, we, let's go back. Uh, we amended our agenda, but we'll leave that motion. I'll make it up. Scott suggested. Scott.
Scott makes a motion to let him second the session. I make the motion we, we start getting the report sent to the mayor every pay period of why we're having the department heads. <coughs> and I'll say we have a motion and a second to get a report on overtime as to uh, what it was worked, what the work was about. Uh, is that correct? You want to know yes. what the work was about, what it's done for, and uh, and uh, no, under what mal hours and yeah. just just to better understand what's going on in these departments. And I'll share it with each of you. Then. Okay. okay. All right. We got a motion and a second. Is that it? Since 1987, Smith Furniture has been in business to serve the community with high quality furniture at the best price. Some of our name brands are Home Stretch, Ashley, Lazy Boy, Catnapper, Lane, Bar Bassett, GE, Frigidaire, Whirlpool, and Maytag. We offer finance in 12 months, same as cash. So stop by Fulton, Mississippi and see Jim, Shannon, and Joe at Smith's Furniture or call us at 662-862-7412. For our local community, from a small dent to major collision repair, Hamilton Paint and Body is here for you. Owners Brett and Kim Guin would like to say thank you for your business. Hello everybody, I'd like to welcome you to Brittany's Flowers and Gifts. Uh, we appreciate all the business. We'd like to encourage you to come by and get a fresh bouquet, uh, a gift. And we, once again, we thank you for all your business here at Brittany's Flores, 921-0774. Northwest Alabama heating and cooling, blowing away our competition. <laughs> Hello, I'm Richard Kitchens, owner of Sports Gallery here on the Court Square in Hamilton. I'd like to thank all of our customers and uh, thank you for watching the Hamilton City Council meeting. Hi, my name is Randy Whitehead, President and CEO of People's Trust Bank. I invite you to view the live streaming of Hamilton City Council meetings every first and third Monday at 6 o'clock p.m. Hi, I'm Dr. Wayne Cobb Jr. here at Hamilton Vision and Eye Care, and this is Dr. Grant Fowler. And uh, we've been in business here in Hamilton since 1995, and it's been a while. So uh, but we appreciate uh, everyone that's come to see us, and uh, if you have any eye care needs, please feel free to give us a call. Thank you. Plan your perfect stay at the Holiday Inn in Guin off of I-22. Enjoy our amazing on-site restaurant and bar with a lunch buffet every Sunday. Relax with a quick getaway with your family and make a splash in our outdoor pool. Book your next event with us. Call us at 205-468-4625. Uh, I'm Rick Chambliss with Marion County Funeral Home and Spry Memorial Chapel in Russellville, Alabama. This is Glenda Cochran, our manager out here. And we just wanted to advise the public of where we're standing, where we were 15 years ago, and where we are now. When we purchased this funeral home, we were doing two and three funerals a year. Now we're doing 80 funerals a year. And we are so excited about the accomplishments that we've made. One of the things that we continually get into is families coming out here and talking about pre-needs and saying, well, we have done something at another funeral home, and, or we've done this, and it wasn't like you're doing here. 
Under the laws of Alabama that was passed in 2002, a funeral establishment has to be certified with the state and carry a certificate of authority before they can even talk to anyone about a pre-need. Even monies that are spent on a pre-need cannot come to the funeral home. They have to be into an insurance policy or they have to go into a trust fund which is governed by the state. One of the things we'd like to ask people to do if there is a question about your pre-need existence with another funeral home, regardless of where it might be, bring it out here to us at no charge, no obligation to you whatsoever. We want to make sure that your family is covered in the very best possible way they can and do it in a legal manner so that your money, when the time comes, is guaranteed to be there. Glenda does an excellent job in consulting with the families and I need to be here, we will. Also, the same scenario in Russell, Alabama, the Spry Memorial Chapel. But we are pleased to serve the public and we plan on serving for years to come.